So, you want to be a teacher in Thailand. What does it take to be a teacher in Thailand? In order to answer that, we need to discuss the various types of teaching that are available because not all teaching positions require the same kind of documents and qualifications on your part as a teacher. There are probably over 100,000 uh, teachers in Thailand who are foreigners. Very few of them are teaching with all of the requirements that have been established by various laws, the Ministry of Education, and the Teachers Council of Thailand. Let's start with the very highest end of the teaching profession. International schools have their own requirements. In order to teach at an international school, for the most part, you must qualify under one of these three categories. One, you have a teaching license from your native country, and your native country is one of the six native English speaking countries. Those countries are the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand. Notice South Africa is not considered a native English speaking country. Neither is the Philippines or India. Those countries, English is the official language. It is not a native language. The reason for that is in your home, before you went to school, in your home, your parents and you spoke another native tongue, Hindi, Tagalog, Ilocano, uh, Africana. So there are other languages that were spoken in the home and it wasn't until the child started school that they learned English. Therefore, English is not considered a native language in those countries. The six countries that I set forth before are whether you are a native of that country depends entirely upon your passport. So there are children of various diplomats and other government officials who might be born in another country, but they have a passport from a native English country. I worked with somebody who was born and raised in South Africa, but had a UK passport. He was considered a UK citizen for purposes of teaching. In the international schools, the first tier is that you are a licensed teacher in your native English speaking country. You could also be a licensed teacher in your non-native English speaking country. However, it is very difficult to work in an international school as a non-native teacher. If you are not teaching English, but teaching another school subject, such as mathematics, science, social studies, you might be able to qualify to teach at an international school if you are licensed in your home country. The second group of people that can teach in an international school are people who have a 
degree or enough university credits for a degree in education. Therefore, if you have a bachelor's in education or sufficient postgraduate classes in the education field, working towards a master's basically in education, that is sufficient. You don't have to have the master's degree, but enough credits to qualify for it. So in other words, if you haven't done your uh, thesis, your dissertation, or you're still working on that, uh, it's acceptable just to have the sufficient credits for one year of coursework. If you have the, the, the bachelor's in education or the coursework in postgraduate education work, then you can apply for a teacher's license. Once you have a teacher's license, you can then work in most international schools. The third group of people who might be able to work in international schools have a degree, a bachelor's degree, and are working towards a degree in uh, education. And those people can be given a two-year waiver of the teacher's license requirement for working in an international school. So to summarize, you either are a licensed teacher in your home country and then will be given a license by the Teachers Council of Thailand. You have not been a teacher, you are not a certified teacher in your home country, but you have sufficient credits or a bachelor's in education to go forward to get the teacher's license. And the third one is people who are currently involved in working towards a master's degree in education and for two years they can teach under a waiver for the uh, teacher's license or what is called a provisional teacher's license. So there is a, an exam to get the teacher's license. It changes all the time. It apparently it's been fairly difficult in the past. Uh, sometimes no one passes it. Uh, so, but for the most part, the international schools will employ people from native English speaking countries and they pull most of their teachers directly from those countries. They recruit in the UK, they recruit in the US, in Australia, and they bring those people over with job offers. The other requirement is that if you come from a foreign country, uh, they typically want to see that you've uh, receive some training in Thai culture. They used to have something called the uh, the uh, Thai culture uh, certificate, and that you what's called a uh, TLC, and uh, they've recently got rid of that. It was a scam. Uh, people weren't learning anything. Uh, they were really uh, exploiting a lot of the uh, teachers telling them they had to get them and only certain companies were licensed to uh, do the seminar, to do the training, and the training didn't accomplish anything. Because international schools are drawing people from foreign countries who probably have never been to Thailand, they are expected to provide training 
for those teachers in Thai culture. International schools tend to pay fairly well. Uh, salaries could start as low as 70,000 baht per month, go up to 150,000 baht per month. So it is a fairly good way to make a living in Thailand, but the requirements are fairly tough. You uh, have usually have to be a teacher in your home country. Some of the lesser schools, you might be able to qualify for the uh, teacher's license or be working on your master's degree in education and therefore eligible to do that. The next tier of teaching are private schools, uh, including bilingual schools. These are not government schools. These are private schools. Similar to the international schools, the uh, lessons for the students are taught primarily in English. Most of the students are going to be learning all subjects in English. The private schools tend to pay anywhere from 30,000 baht per month up to about 70,000 baht per month. There are requirements for uh, teaching at those schools. Those schools are licensed by the Ministry of Education and any teacher who teaches at those schools must have been approved by the Ministry of Education. What does it take to get approved by the Ministry of Education? You have to have at least a bachelor's degree. It can be in any subject, a four-year degree. That degree has to be verified. What does that mean? The recent requirement is that you obtain a letter of verification as to your degree from the university. It is sent in a sealed envelope to the Ministry of Education. Why is this done? Well, it used to be that you could buy a degree, something printed, basically a forgery, on a place like Khao San Road or Walking Street in Patia. Lots of printers there, they're still there, and you can buy a degree there, basically, a piece of paper saying you have a degree. Because of all of those, there were, uh, and teachers submitting those, the Ministry of Education uh, identified quite a few people who had fraudulent degrees. They were prosecuted. Uh, not severe penalties, but basically fined and uh, told they can't teach in Thailand. So a requirement for teaching legally in Thailand is to get approval by the Ministry of Education through the submission of a verified four-year university degree. In addition, some of the MOE schools also require some kind of TEFL training. TEFL training is a shortened educational certificate. In other words, usually it requires 120 hours of classroom work consisting of 100 hours of instruction and at least 20 hours of teaching demonstrations. That cannot be online. That must be in-person classes. There are lots of TEFL schools in Thailand. 
all, and all around the world. So for some schools, you will have to have a TEFL and the verification of a four-year university degree. The university degree can be in any subject. Government schools. Government schools are a step down usually from the private and bilingual schools, but they are still fairly good places to work. At least you can work legally there if you are hired directly by the school. So for a direct hire in a government school, and the typical salaries are 30,000 baht to about 45,000 baht per month. You also have to have a four-year university degree, which again has to be approved by the Ministry of Education. It takes two to three weeks to get the approval from the MOE. With any of these positions, once you have approval by the MOE and you have either a non-B working visa or a non-O spousal or child support visa, you can go ahead and apply for a work permit. There's one other way to get a teaching job in a government school, and that is through what is known as an agency. Agencies provide independent contractor teachers to schools. In order for the arrangement to be legal, the agency must provide the teacher, the school must accept the teacher, the school provides the usual documents, and the agency arranges for a work permit through the school and does the work permit application. Now let's start talking about lesser, we'll call it dodgy uh, work situations. A dodgy work situation is where the school does not provide the documents to get a work permit or, as in some cases, the teacher does not have a verified four-year university degree. In those cases, the, there's a possibility if the agency is somewhat above board for the teacher to be provided a work permit through the agency. In that event, the agency is not submitting the bachelor's degree. The agency is saying that this person is working as a consultant for the agency. Because outside of the teaching world, outside of the MOE TCT regulated teaching world, in the normal Thai employment environment, it isn't completely necessary to have a four-year university degree. Yes, most people do, and it is one of the listed requirements. However, when applying for a work permit, it is possible for the sponsoring employer to submit information and documents showing the person has skills, training, experience, 
that would serve as a waiver of the four-year university degree. Normally, four-year university degree requirement for a work permit. But in certain cases, the Department of Employment at the Ministry of Labor will accept something less. And that depends on how much, oh, let's say, political pull or uh, influence the particular agency has with the government official he's dealing with. So we're starting to get now to basically non-legal teaching in Thailand. And the first example of that is where an agency is the direct employer and provider of a work permit or someone they assign to work at a school. There's another area of legal teaching that we should talk about. Those are called language centers. Language centers can be uh, schools that are uh, not just like typical uh, classroom uh, that they provide. For instance, it might be in a shopping mall. It might be a standalone building or just might be some offices somewhere. And they provide classroom setting. These are regulated by the Ministry of Education. The people who work at language centers must have their degrees approved by the Ministry of Education. Therefore, for the most part, the language centers are complying with the law. If you work full time in a language center, they should provide a work permit. And if they don't, that is a violation of the law. Uh, 10 years ago, one of the major language centers that has multiple branches in Thailand, ECC, got raided nationwide because their teachers didn't have work permits. They did not prosecute the teachers. And that's something you'll hear me say over and over again. They don't want to prosecute teachers who are working without licenses, who are working without work permits, who have tourist visas. They don't want to prosecute them. They know Thailand has to uh, develop its English skills. And the only way to do that is to bring in foreign teachers. And frankly, the requirements are probably too high and they just get worse and worse. And uh, they really need to straighten out the game so that people understand what the requirements are, including the employers, uh, the schools and the uh, language centers and the agencies. So there are a lot of part-time teachers at these agencies. And for the most part, they do not have work permits. They might have been approved by the Ministry of Education, but they don't have work permits. And therefore, technically, they're not teaching legally. Again, you won't see the teachers themselves prosecuted, but yes, they will come after language centers that employ a lot of English teachers who don't have work permits. And that is why you see language centers tend to have several full-time work permitted employees. And then they'll also have some part-time freelance employees. And they are supposed to get MOE uh, approval for those uh, part-time teachers. Some do, some don't. For the most part, they don't have work permits. The language centers tend to employ teachers after school 
and on the weekends. So it's still possible to convert that into a 40-hour week. But the teachers who work uh, full-time for them that are work permitted tend to work at least one day of the weekend and then uh, four other days during the week. So those are language centers. Now we're starting to get even more informal. There is quite a bit of private teaching. Private teaching is in person. It can be at coffee shops. It can be at uh, clients' homes. Uh, for the most part, unregulated people who do it don't have work permits. They might be, they uh, might have tourist visas. They might be on a visa exempt entry. They might be on a retirement visa. But they are uh, offering private lessons uh, to Thai students, to Japanese students, to Korean students. Um, many, many years ago, I taught to Russian students. Uh, they worked for an Italian construction company and they required a very high level of teaching because they needed translator certification. And that requires a very high level of the Cambridge battery of tests. You might have heard of the IELTS test. This is a step above the IELTS test. Uh, and the skill level is quite high. They have to be able to read a uh, novel and be able to interpret and understand the novel itself. So that's pretty much the privates. The newest area of teaching is online teaching. And again, there's goes from the formal to the informal. Formal online teaching primarily is teaching to Chinese children. There are several companies doing this. They operate out of the Philippines, out of Vietnam, and uh, they have their own software. So you actually have a very good teaching environment. You can uh, put documents up on the screen. You can uh, use a pen to read to highlight stuff, to uh, redline stuff, to circle stuff. You have a uh, virtual whiteboard for drawing stuff. They also can see your video, obviously, your video feed, and you see theirs. So you can uh, show them pictures, show them things, make hand gestures. It's, it's quite sophisticated, and definitely it's the new trend in teaching. Uh, there's actually uh, quite a shortage of regular teachers now in Thailand, foreign teachers, because the preference is to do online teaching. Why not? You do it from the comfort of your home. As long as you have the stable internet connection, uh, potentially you could do it from some co-working spaces, but you have to be able to find a fairly uh, quiet, distraction-free place to do that. Most of these companies pay into PayPal. Uh, there's some that do transfers. Uh, some of them require you have a US bank and they want a 1099 you. Uh, before the this incredible influx of online teaching occurred many, many years ago. I worked for a company called smartthinking.com, still in existence. It's bought out by the largest textbook company in the world, Pearson. And that was primarily working with high school students and university and community college students in the United States who needed assistance with 
writing assignments and research papers. And it wasn't, it was more teaching than it was editing. You don't edit their papers. Uh, you actually uh, just highlight section saying this is the kind of mistake you made and they have resources online you direct the person to read those resources so they can rewrite and edit those uh, mistakes out of the uh, paper they also pay uh, by check and uh, 1099 you so you don't need to have a US bank account uh, all of these online companies, they pay, starting pay is about $10 an hour, goes up to about $20 an hour. Uh, some of them are quite uh, flaky uh, and dodgy. Uh, some of them are quite, uh, are quite established and get good reviews. Again, this is totally off the uh, grid. You know, you're not going to get a work permit for doing this. Uh, you, you're not going to have a, a non-B visa to do it. Uh, you can have a non-O visa and do it, but you're not going to be getting a work permit for doing it. So that's the trend in teaching is towards the online teaching. There's also very informal online teaching. You could just do privates, get your own customers, do it on Skype. Your customers, your clients are probably going to be not going to be Thai speakers, but are probably going to be Korean speakers who are here in Thailand, Korean natives or Japanese natives. They are the ones who are interested in boosting their conversational skills. The uh, Thai students, the problem is that usually it's the parents that are paying for the lessons and they will much prefer to send their kids to a language center, what's called a cram school, cram school, and not to do it online or in private. So Thailand is a popular place to do online teaching. That's because there's a lot of people who came here to do regular teaching. They found they didn't like it for a lot of reasons. Most of them were dealing with agencies or government schools with really uh, poor administrations and that exploited people teachers and mistreated them so online teaching is a viable option uh, you can set your own hours uh, and you can get decent hours and it's decent money apparently people say it's uh, more money than uh, regular classroom teaching what happens if you don't have a bachelor's degree there are schools in the provinces that sometimes will be able to hire a teacher without a bachelor's degree. And those schools tend to be very established, older schools that have some pull with the Ministry of Education. That's a very rare circumstance. Usually what happens is you're through an agency and the agency either directly employs you or directly employs you illegally, never providing a work permit. They might say, yeah, 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 we'll get you a work permit. And they never do. And then it's four or five months down the line, you quit. No, the agency had filled the position. There's another backpacker who's going to go take your position who will replace you. It's an endless supply of backpackers and people willing to work six months to a year in Thailand just to have the experience of living in Thailand. The uh, work permit process takes, as I said, after the three, two to three weeks to get MOE approval of your uh, degree, 
the work permit process should only take another one to two weeks. However, these agencies will drag it on and on, and some of them won't even apply until you pass your probationary period. That's illegal. However, there's nothing you can do. You can't force them. Your only real option is to go find a real job that will provide a work permit. And it's wild, wild west there with these uh, teaching agencies. Some of them are reputable and very good, and they get work permits for the teachers, even though they don't have the bachelor's degree. And that's getting into a fuzzy area. And let's talk about what Twitchy talked about today. My understanding is Twitchy does not have a bachelor's degree and that he's going to go get a TEFL and try to use that to get a job as a teacher. As we know, that will not be legal teaching. He might get a work permit for it. It's still not legal teaching because technically he doesn't have MOE approval for that kind of position. Even if it's a direct hire from a school or even if it's through an agency. The agency may provide a work permit as a consultant and not as a teacher. And that is not legal teaching because the work permit is tied to a specific location. It's a specific work location. And that specific work location must be the employer's DBD registered address, the address they incorporated with. So the location on the work permit will be the agency's business address. It will not be the school the teacher is working at. Therefore, it is still illegal teaching. However, and I will repeat this, they do not bust teachers for teaching without work permits. Teachers are highly respected in Thailand. Even the very flaky foreign teachers that I've worked with, they still gain a high level of respect. I started off as a teacher in Rayong, and this was 10 years ago. I didn't last as a teacher very long just because I got uh, into corporate work, and that eventually led me to return to my normal occupation of being a lawyer. Uh, as a teacher in Rayong, if you would get pulled over in a car, you showed them your teaching card, and you were let go. You did not have to even pay a bribe. It was a get out of jail free card. And that's because uh, the teachers had done quite a bit of service work in Rayong with the police department there. And that's typical throughout Thailand is that if the police officer knows that you are a teacher, it's a highly respected profession in Thailand and they will try to give you every benefit of the, of the doubt. When the Riverside Hotel was raided in Chiang Mai. And the reason it was raided is they, there were a bunch of online teachers teaching in a converted uh, hotel suite. Uh, they had been reported, it was reported, a complaint was made that they were uh, training Chinese spies. They were in fact teaching English to Chinese kids. Uh, None of the teachers were arrested. There were teachers who did not have their passports, and those teachers were taken down to the police station and held until someone brought their passport. One teacher, I believe, was on overstay and uh, went through whatever process, was probably just asked to leave the country, pay the fine. That's typical. 
uh, when in an overstay situation. Uh, the rules are a little stricter now on overstay that potentially you can get blacklisted for a long overstay that you don't report. In other words, you get arrested like these people, uh, like this gentleman was. And then if you have a sufficient overstay, I think over three months, then you're going to be blacklisted for a certain amount of time. It's pretty strict. Those are the new rules that were established by the junta within the last two years. And uh, as a matter of fact, you sign, when you get your extension of stay, you sign a paper acknowledging those penalties. So going back to Twitchy, is he illegally teaching? Probably will be illegally teaching, yes. Will he be busted? Absolutely not. There are several hundred thousand teachers in Thailand. Most of them do not comply with the regulations. Most of them are on the fringe and not teaching legally. They don't have MOE approval. They don't have a work permit. They don't have a non-B or non-O visa. But that's just the way things are in Thailand. It, it's, they know teachers don't make a lot of money. It's a highly respected profession. And therefore, they are not going to bother them. There's just it's no money in it. Nothing good could come out of it. It's just not going to be something they pursue. So if you want to teach in Thailand, there are options, quite a few now. And even if you don't have a bachelor's degree, there are possibilities in Thailand. And it's fairly safe to do it. I've, I haven't heard of any teachers uh, arrested for teaching without work permits. The general situation in Thailand for teaching is not real good. Uh, if you are a licensed teacher, yes, it can be a career. Uh, if you are not working towards being a licensed teacher, you can teach legally for two years under a waiver. And potentially you could break that up, do two years, go, some, go to like Cambodia or Vietnam or China to teach for a year, and then come back to Thailand and probably get two more years, uh, but that's under a waiver. Uh, if you're going to teach long-term in Thailand, the recommendation is to get a bachelor's degree in education, or if you have a bachelor's degree, get your uh, master's degree in education. You can make a good career in Thailand uh, teaching if you qualify properly as a teacher. Otherwise, it's just subsistence living. Yeah, there are people who can make 50, 60,000 baht a month. Uh, they work quite a few hours because in that case, they are working. And I did this when I came to Thailand. You're working uh, at a school that provides a work permit. And in the evenings, or you might I taught at uh, business English at factories, and that allowed me to eventually transition into real employment in Thailand, not teaching. Uh, but there's also teaching at the language centers in the evening and on the weekend, or teaching privates during those same hours. And with that, you can bring your income up to 50, 60,000 baht a month. And that's, um, that's a livable wage in Thailand. Very difficult to live off a teacher's basic salary of 30 or 35,000 baht per month. Non-native teachers, that's a whole different story. Most of the non-native teachers come from the Philippines and most of them have degrees in education. Despite that fact, they are paid 
considerably less than native English speaking teachers. Uh, a teacher from the Philippines with a bachelor's degree uh, will be earning 20 to 25,000 baht per month for their uh, classroom teaching. In other words, teaching at a government school. The only additional requirement that they have, a non-native speaker must also take the TOEIC exam, T-O-E-I-C. The TOEIC exam is an exam developed by the ETS, that's the Educational Testing Service, and that's the one in America that does the SAT, the GMAT, all of those tests. One I had to take, the LSAT. So they do those tests. That is in conjunction with a Japanese testing company. And the TOEIC exam was developed in order to determine whether Japanese employees could uh, be promoted into management and also to place them in jobs that might require English skills, like in human resources, in administration. So it was used to gauge the, their English skills for those positions. And uh, the TOEIC exam, it, it's primarily testing conversational uh, English that you would use in business. For instance, making a travel reservation, making an appointment, talking to somebody at a over a business lunch. And it tests all four skills, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And uh, it's a test that's now being used quite a bit in Thailand, uh, not only for uh, these uh, teaching jobs, but generally in the, uh, throughout Thailand in the employment, in the private sector, and even the government sector. In order to get admin jobs, uh, often they require a TOEIC test. I do not believe there is a specific score that you need on the TOEIC test if you are a non-native speaker. You just have to have the test result. The interesting thing is that despite the fact that the Filipinos are so poorly paid and so exploited uh, in the uh, educational system in Thailand, if you are a non-native speaker from a European country, you're German, you're, Czech, you're uh, from the Czech Republic, you're a Russian, you can get a job, you need the TOEIC, but otherwise you're in just like a native speaker. And uh, particularly if you're teaching a non-English subject, it's fairly easy to get a job that way. So if you have a degree in math or science, for instance, biology is in high demand, uh, those are ways that a non-native speaker can easily get employment as a teacher. And it can be legal employment. Again, the, the MOE will... Uh, verify your degree and you'll be work permitted, you'll get your non-B visa. Uh, so non-native speakers don't fret. It's a little more difficult, but particularly if you have a bachelor's degree in a desired subject, music, uh, even physical education, that's become a big uh, demand. So if you have a degree that applies to that and you're a non-native speaker, you're, you're fairly uh, good to get a job in a school. English, you're going to have a little more difficulty. They hire them. Uh, they also hire uh, French teachers, a few Spanish teachers, lots of Chinese teachers, uh, Japanese, Korean teachers, uh, not so much German. Uh, but there are some openings for German teachers. So you can also use your native speaking skills, perhaps to springboard to a teaching job in Thailand. Again, the, the most 
common foreign languages taught in Thai schools are French and Chinese and Japanese. Unfortunately for Filipinos, the ads are very uh, exploitive of their nationality. Uh, you'll see if you go, the primary uh, job search engine for teachers is ajan.com, A-J-A-R-N.com. Ajan means teacher. Uh, ajan.com is a good marketplace for finding teaching jobs. Uh, you'll see plenty of jobs that are looking for Filipinos and or if you see jobs that are offering salaries of 15 to 25,000 baht a month, odds are it's going to say Filipino inside the ad. Uh, to me, I don't quite appreciate the fact that they label those Filipino. Uh, to me, the ad should be written that non-native speakers uh, welcome to apply. And uh, the reason is because when it says Filipino, it's telling people that they're only going to accept a Filipino applicant, whereas there may be other non-native speakers who they might accept. I have been seeing a lot of uh, African uh, teachers in Thailand. Uh, unfortunately, Thais are fairly uh, racist when it comes to the color of skin. Darker ties are seen as low status because the darker skin signifies they came from farming areas. They were out in the sun. And therefore, the darker teachers, whether they be African or Filipino, are considered lower level. But I have been seeing uh, quite a few African teachers employed by schools now, especially the ones from the uh, countries in Africa that are have official English language, Ethiopia, Nigeria, those countries, their English is okay. They have an accent. Uh, the one country that you don't see a lot of uh, teachers coming from is India. And that's because the accent is just too heavy. Uh, much stronger than the Filipino accent or the African accent, and much stronger than any of the other non-native English speaker countries. And so there's just, you just won't see a lot of Indians in the that part of the teaching profession. I imagine that they could get a job teaching math or science, however, and, and there are some, I'm not saying there aren't any. However, the, most of the Indians are able to get jobs outside of the teaching sector, outside of the education industry. Uh, they have some advantages in doing that. They work for less, and uh, they tend to have uh, good skills in things like accounting and uh, science. So that's basically the broad stroke of teaching in Thailand. I will do more vlogs on this. And I just wanted to respond to what Twitchy was talking about today when he was talking on Video Freedom about possibly teaching in the future. He says he's going to vlog on it. Uh, but again, understand that that's not the legal way to go. If you just want something to occupy your time, keep your brain active, it might be good. I will do another uh, vlog on the different types of students in teaching you can do. Uh, because not everything is classroom teaching, not everything is to uh, teens or, or children. Uh, you can teach adults, you can teach in companies, uh, you can teach tests, which I did a lot of. I taught companies. I taught test taking because I happen to be very good in test taking. Uh, and that's a whole different uh, ball of wax 
different places you can do that. I'll get to that in my next vlog. And this is in Thailand, your host, Mark the Lawyer, and I'm out of here. Have a good day.